So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and course today we're going to course like I said get into and talk about the Roman uh, civilization uh, as a whole. Uh, so um, uh, first I'm going to go ahead and give you a little background, of course, about you know who the Romans are uh, in. Um, of course, there's a little definition of it for you uh, on the bottom there. Uh, of course, the Roman civilization uh, began as this, of course, it's kind of like a European civilization, but it was really more like a civilization that started in ancient Italy uh, a long time ago, roughly close to maybe, it may have started close to 3,000 years ago and less. And what happened over time, as you know, it grew into a massive empire uh, that, of course, became known uh, as the Roman Empire. This, this empire would be, you know, occupy at least three continents at one point. Most of Europe uh, was pretty much occupied by them, except mostly by Germany. Uh, also, they controlled parts of North Africa, like from um, pretty much from Morocco to uh, what is Egypt. They controlled that area like above the Sahara Desert. And they also did control part of Southwest Asia. People forget about that. But, you know, this empire, you know, I think at one point stretched all the way to uh, what is uh, Iraq. And uh, if you go to the map here, uh, you can see the widespread area of the Roman Empire. It's, you know, basically based around the Mediterranean Sea, which I'll get to later. It's kind of like almost like a lake, Roman lake uh, that they ruled ruled around. So their, their western border was like Atlantic Ocean. And then at one point, their border went all the way to like almost the Persian Gulf and the Caspian Sea. Uh, so it was, it was huge at one point. Uh, the actual size of the Roman Empire uh, peaked about, it varies, but at least 2 million square miles, maybe larger, two, two, two and a half or two to, two to 3 million square miles was about how big uh, the Roman Empire got at one point uh, with maybe a population, that might be right, but close to 60 million may have been the amount of population that they had. And the empire later was a multi-ethnic empire. So it wasn't like really one people, more or less, but just multiple different nationalities of peoples that made up the empire, uh, which were all over the place, uh, from Europe to North Africa and part of Asia. Uh, the civilization itself peaked, you can see, from 753 to 476. That's typically the period of, of what they call the Roman Empire, which is about 11, 1200 years or more. Uh, although the empire does keep going later, you have what they call the Byzantine Empire that kind of continues in the east, um, mostly around Turkey and Turkey and um, and what is um, Greece, etc. That goes up to fourteen fifty three. So you've got you've got Roman influences that really go all the way back to you know, just recently five six hundred years ago. Um, so it's not something that just you know a long time ago in ancient times. Uh, it's had a major influence on pretty much uh, culture later, uh, like medieval times up through modern times. Even our own state, like the United States, uh, was heavily influenced by the Romans. It's part of why the United States developed a Republican form of government was because of the Roman influence, which because the Romans had a republic at one point, like we have. All right. So uh, anyway, um, of course, here's, of course, a little PowerPoint slide, of course, showing you, of course, some of the early history of Rome. Uh, the Romans, uh, if you study about
the Roman, like we study about the Punic Wars themselves, the Romans were the ones that really wrote the history of the Punic Wars. Uh, if you know about history, whoever wins like a war usually writes the history of it. That's the way it is. Uh, so the, to the victor got the spoils or whatever, as they say. So all, all the wars were written from the Roman perspective. Um, so there's no, there's no, you know, spin on the other side, you know, some, somebody saying, you know, from the, from the Carthaginian side much, those are considered really to be the, the three most famous writers that really write about the Punic Wars, Levy, Polybius, and another guy named Apian was also well known. Uh, and, um, actually those are actually three of them. And, um, yeah, here it is right here again, those three, actually three, that should be a comma there. Uh, let me talk about Polybius. Polybius is actually the one that is considered to be the most important one. He he had the oldest sources uh, on the on the uh, Punic Wars, which date back to about the second century BC. Uh, he had a series of books that were called the Histories of Polybius, which are still around. Uh, he also got Levy, whose original name was Titus Levius, uh, and he wrote a. a bunch of books, but mostly the one that survived the most out of the history of Rome was the War of Hannibal, which goes in the Second Punic War. And Apian has a series of books that are called the Roman history, but they go back a little earlier, like to, um, they date to like the second century Roman Empire. So I think going back to maybe Emperor Trajan or something like that, it's about where they were. So that one's not as I think Hannibal, like the Han War with Hannibal, like Levy and Polybius, those are the two oldest sources that really kind of go into, of course, the Romans. Let me get a little bit. I don't usually talk too much about the uh, First Punic War, uh, but um, the First Punic War, if you really read about it, I'll get into a second, it's going to break out over Sicily. Uh, before I get to that, let me compare the two states a little bit. Uh, Carthage, I told you, had a large city, a uh, quarter of a million at the time, 250,000. But I think by the time of, I think by the time of the, uh, yeah, the third Punic War, it's like half a million or something like that. But at the time when the wars broke out, they probably had a quarter of a million, which by the way was larger than Romans. Uh, so they had maybe, uh, and then um, they think they had a powerful navy. Uh, maybe about 500 ships, roughly, which included like, you know, some naval ships. And of course, they had also uh, maritime fleets uh, as well. And the Romans had more of an army. I don't know if it was that big, but I think some claim it was like half a million. Probably not that big. But but they had a little navy. They didn't have much of a navy. That was the only thing about it uh, at the time. And so um, they had a smaller city, uh, but they had a larger army because uh, they controlled all of Italy uh, at that point. Now, the first war, the first Punic War, of course, was fought, like I said, over Sicily. Sicily, if you go to this map here, uh, was considered a vital part of the Mediterranean. It's kind of like between Italy and North Africa. And so both of the sides, like Roman side, wanted to control Sicily so they could basically control the Mediterranean and then maybe also take over North Africa. And the Carthaginians wanted to use Sicily to maybe take over Europe. So it's kind of in reverse, you know, what they wanted to do. Uh, and so, uh, and also the Greeks were kind of part of there too as well. They were hoping to kind of get rid of the Carthaginians. Greeks like the Romans better. And um, so uh, what happened was war broke out in um, about maybe about 264. And predominantly it was a naval war. Uh, but they also fought on the island of Sicily. So it was a combination of both those in the war. And um, part of why the Romans were successful in the First Punic War was because of the um, Romans um, um, developing like a naval force. Uh, the Romans, like I said, didn't have much of a naval power. And so sometime during the war, they were able to capture Carthaginian ships and they copied them. They took them apart, put them back together, and basically figured out how to build ships similar to what the 
uh, Phoenicia, uh, what the Carthaginians had. And so from there, they were able to kind of develop their navy after that. Uh, the Carthaginians, um, so you know, at the beginning of the war, had a better navy, but the Romans and their vessels, uh, they came up with this idea that was pretty ingenious called a corvus. A corvus was this landing plank or boarding device that they put on the ships, which were about, I think, 36 feet tall, uh, according to, I think, Polybius. And they would uh, come alongside a car, like an enemy ship like the Carthaginians, and they would board it and take it over, like seize it. Uh, and so this became kind of a strategy where the Romans would turn, I guess, naval battles into land battles, you know, by taking them. So by the end of that first war, Carth the Carthaginians, their navy was broken. Uh, and after that, the Romans really controlled all of Mediterranean Sea, uh, naval-wise. Uh, and so um, that was pretty important. Uh, later, uh, of course, what happened was after the Romans took over Sicily, you can see in that map, they also took over Sardinia, and they also took over Corsica. So all that was pretty much taken over. So the Romans controlled all of Italy, uh, Sicily, Sardinia, and Corsica. That's pretty much their first conquests uh, in, in the actual war or wars. Now, let me talk about what happened next. Now, after the first war ended, uh, what happened with the um, Carthaginians was they had a general uh, who was named Hamilcar, Hamilcar Barca, uh, or the Barca family, uh, as they're called. He had been one of the best generals in the first Punic War. And what he did, he decided to, um, sometime during that period, like they think close to about the, um, I want to say early, uh, sometime in the 240s, he basically crossed into Spain and began conquering it and colonizing it. They took it over. The Romans called it, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the Carthaginians later called that area of Spain, they called it New Carthage. Romans called it Hispania, which is where the word Spain comes from. Uh, after, though, what happened was Hamilcar died. Uh, and so you know about power eventually over time passed to his son, whose name is Hannibal, Hannibal Barca. Hannibal would go on to be one of the greatest generals of, of, the, of the Carthaginians. He was one of the most feared men in Roman history. Uh, and I do have pictures of Hannibal I can show you uh, just kind of briefly right here. But there he is, Hannibal. Uh, Hannibal died about 183. Uh, and um, Hannibal, I don't know if you know much about him. Hannibal uh, was considered to be the father of what we call military strategy. Uh, he was the guy that first came up with the idea that battles is like chess, you know, moving men around the right spot uh, to defeat an enemy. And so that's something he was able to do. Uh, and so a lot of his battles, like the type of strategy they used, was done on purpose. I think previously in battles, enemies would just attack each other and just try to, you know, attack up the gut in the center of a formation, which the Romans were known for, which their legions, these huge legions, just try to ram you up the gut. Uh, and so that was something neat he was known for. So he came up with tactics where, you know, to try to hit enemies, not in the front, not just in the front, but, you know, encircle them, try to attack their, their flanks, to attack their rear, uh, to use cavalry, you know, all over the place, uh, on the flanks and the rear. He also employed um, pike formations uh, like the like the um, Macedonians did, uh, which they developed in North Africa uh, as well. And um, like I said, Hannibal was this kind of man that the Romans were really fearful of. He's like a boogeyman. Uh, he's like a ghost in the closet, you know, a ghost under the bed, like, you know, kids scared of a ghost or whatever. That's the way the Romans felt about Hannibal. They were scared to death of him, not just when he was alive, but when he was dead, people were scared of him. You just mention the name and just like, you know, you'd have a, you know, you know like, like a kind of a shudder down your the back of your neck, like, ooh, God, just kind of scared, you know, thinking about it. Uh, and um, so he really, his name scared people. Just mentioned to somebody, like, oh, God, him. Uh, and um, so the name struck fear in people. And the Romans had a saying, which was, 
Hannibal at Portus, uh, which means in Latin, Hannibal's at the gates. Uh, and so that was quite something that, um, that like parents or nursemaids would usually tell children, like if they were being bad or they wouldn't go to bed, they would say, Hannibal's at the gates. Uh, I better run off and go to bed, you know, that kind of thing. So to scare you and go to bed. So, um, now let me get, I got a few minutes left here. Uh, let me just talk briefly about how the second Punic War, the, they'd have a second war, of course, break out, uh, which was because, you know, because of the Roman, uh, of the Carthaginian general Hannibal uh, at that point. And uh, so the second, the second Punic War broke out because of uh, Spain. Uh, both, both Rome and Carthage wanted control of it, just like Sicily. And if you know about the Second Punic War, it was the bloodiest of the three Punic Wars. There was three of them, first, second, third Punic Wars. Uh, this one like was the second longest, 2, 218 to about 202 BC. Uh, they're not sure if the deaths are about right, but anywhere from one to two million people died in the Punic Wars. This one, at least maybe close to a million, they have died in this one as far as they know. So they think the Punic Wars were some of the bloodiest conflicts that was fought in ancient times. Uh, you'd have to really go later up to modern times to really find anything that's even close to that. Uh, I think that maybe the Hundred Years War or something like that might be considered pretty bloody. I know that's you know close to that. That's a little bigger than that uh, overall. And what happened to cause the whole thing to break out, it was a city that was in eastern Spain, which was on the Mediterranean Sea, called Saguntum. Saguntum was a city that was founded by the Greeks a long time ago, and it was kind of allied with the Romans. Uh, and Hannibal thought that that whole area of um, where Saguntum was, was Carthaginian territory. Uh, and so he decided to lay siege to it to try to force them to, you know, I guess adhere to him uh, in, in power of that region. They wouldn't, sub they wouldn't have submit to him, and so he sacked their city. And so it caused the Second Punic War to break out uh, at that point. Uh, and so Rome basically declares war on Hannibal uh, at that point. Uh, and the two sides, you know, go to war. Uh, and so the Romans don't know how bloody this war is going to be, but it's going to be pretty bloody. You can see Saguntum's right here. Uh, so we march up here sometime around 219, 218, I think is what the time period it was, they think. And he would sack it. Sacks that city basically, and at that point the Romans are like, "Well, uh, we're going to send force to attack you, you know, in Spain." Uh, and so Hannibal's like, "Well, you know, I better do something about that." Uh, and so what what Hannibal decides to do, he does a preemptive strike. Uh, if you know about this, he decides to go on the offensive. So in 218, he takes a huge army, marches it eastward uh, through eastern Spain through the Pyrenees also into southern France, which the Romans later called Gaul, and then marches through the Alps. And so that's the thing that Hannibal's very famous for. Hannibal is this famous general that's, you know, known for crossing the Alps with a huge army. I think the army may have been bigger than that. I think he lost a lot of men trying to get through. And uh, Hannibal later uh, is going to... Um, be known for using elephants and like war elephants. He fought with elephants, which you know scared the hell out of the Romans, you know, and really demoralized them because uh, they trampled over their troops and frightened them. Uh, and so, over time, uh, when um, Hannibal is going to smash into Italy uh, at that point, you can see he kind of goes through the Alps right there, uh, and uh, he's going to invade down into what is the Po River Valley uh, in. When the Romans first attack him, they just get destroyed. Battles of Trebia, Lake Trezamine, or Trezamino, I think it's called. Uh, they get totally routed in the battle. Uh, and um, there was a Roman general that they wouldn't listen to. His name was uh, a consul named Fabius Maximus. He kept telling them his tactics are just too good. You ain't going to be able to beat him. Uh, the only choice is going to be like delaying tactics and guerrilla tactics and things like that. And, but they thought he was a coward. The Romans didn't believe in that kind of fighting. They wanted to go mano a mano, you know, and just, just fight him. And so Fabius, they got, they sacked him. Uh, he was called the Fabius, Fabius the Delayer uh, and all of that. 
And so what's going to happen, uh, if you, of course, read about what's what's going to occur uh, with the Romans, they're going to decide to amass a huge army, uh, try to defeat Hannibal. And it's going to lead to a battle called the Battle of Cannae, uh, which, of course, is Hannibal's most famous battle. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that next time. It's going to be kind of considered an important battle. But in the end, uh, Hannibal is just not going to have enough really to defeat the Romans in the Second War. So I'll get to that. I'll talk about the Third Punic War. Then the next lecture on um, when, uh, Wednesday, I'll get into like the beginning of the Roman Empire in the late Republic is one thing, of course, I'll be doing as well. So uh, like I said, um, don't forget about those assignments I've got posted, of course, uh, to Canvas. Don't forget about vocab later in the week, but I think by Friday this week. I will be posting this lecture, of course, to my YouTube channel. So if you got any comments, questions, let me know about it. And so that's it pretty much for today's lecture. So I'll see you later in the week, uh, of course, with another lecture on Wednesday. And y'all take care. So see you later.